Death Valley Days. In the winning of the West, history has left us the stories of many winners, far-sighted, courageous men like Samuel Houston and Colonel Dodge. But the Old West also had its share of losers. Our story is about one of them, a man named Jim Murphy who robbed trains and banks with Sam Bass, the notorious Texas outlaw. Jim Murphy's loyalties were as divided as his twisted personality, and he became the informer who cried. Jim Murphy, do you have anything to say before I pass sentence? Nothing ain't been said before. Murphy, I, I'd like to show some leniency toward you uh, for the sake of your wife and children. But you're a hard case and... Skip the speeches, Judge. Why don't you just say what you've got to say and let's get on out of here. Therefore, James Murphy, for the habitual crimes of armed robbery, I... You there, outside! I've ordered this court cleared of spectators. Beg your pardon, Your Honor. I'm not a spectator. I'm Captain Peake of the Texas Rangers. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Captain. I'm about to pass sentence. As I was saying, for armed robbery committed against the sovereign state of Texas, Jim Murphy, I sentence you to... Your Honor. I wonder if I could have a word with you. It's about the case. Will you stop interrupting me? This court stands adjourned till further notice. So what's your angle, Ranger? What do you want with me? I want to help you, Murphy. Help me? You can clear out of here. That's what'll help me. Just leave me alone. Well, I haven't spoken to the judge. You'd be on your way to Kansas right now. So I've helped you already. What did you say to him? You got a right to know. You gave up your rights the day you started riding with Sam Bass. Sam's got nothing to do with this. What kind of an hombre is he, Murphy? No, he's smart. He's a dang sight smarter than any lawman. And how about you? Are you smart, Murphy? What kind of a hold has he got on you? Nobody's got any hold on me. Nobody. The law's got a hold on you for life until your back breaks working the rock pile in Leavenworth. But you're smart, Murphy. And maybe you get on out of here. You don't tell me what to do. I call the tune around here. And when I talk, you listen. Just what did you say to that judge, Ranger? I told him that in the interest of justice, if you'd help the law, the law would help you. There just might be a way to keep you out of prison. But you don't seem to be interested. I ain't interested in anything that's going to help the law. All right, Murphy. It's your life. Murphy? I don't want nothing from you, Ranger. Just what kind of game you playing, Peek? Why don't you put me on the train up in Tyler? Thought maybe you might like one last smell of freedom before you start to rot in Leavenworth. Better get used to it, Murphy. You're gonna live on hard jack and beans for the rest of your life. Look, I know you didn't bring me up here to pick flowers. Just what is your proposition, Ranger? All right. I'll give it to you straight. 
I want you to lead us to Sam Bass. <laughs> oh, forget it. Sam Bass is the best friend I got in this world. There's other things besides friends, like family, like your wife, Alice. Now, you kids. leave her out of this. She don't know anything about it. She knows you're on your way to prison and that she won't see you again as long as you live. Of course, there is a way. Turn in Sam Bass. Look, Murphy, Sam Bass is no good. I won't do it. Well, we're going to get him, Murphy. Sooner or later, I guarantee. Supposing, just supposing that I was to help you. Like I said, Sam's smart. Well, he knows the law had me. He smells something fishy a mile away. Not if you convince him otherwise. We're ready to publish in all the papers that you jumped bail and that there's a reward on your head. If you lead us to Bass and we get him, dead or alive, I'm prepared to offer you complete amnesty. What does that mean? A full pardon. It's no good. I can't turn on Sam. He trusts me. Suit yourself, Murphy. Sure is pretty. Mighty pretty. Ever see her before? Alice never gave you that. Where'd you get it? Never mind. A woman like this loved me. No crumb like Sam Bassett stand in my way. By the way, Alice asked me to give you this. Dear Jim, Captain Peake is trying to help. Whatever he wants, please do it for me and the children. You win. Tell me what I gotta do. Those posters will back up our story about you jumping bail, but you'll have to keep low. There's nothing lower than a man who turns on his best friend. You're about to do one of the few good things you've ever done. That don't make it no easier. Nobody said it was easy. All right, Ranger, let's get moving. Let's get it over with. By the way, I thought maybe you might like to have this. Sort of a reminder. Jim Murphy, train robber, put up your hands in the name of the law. This is Dad Egan, and I got you at last. <laughs> you no good, <laughs> D-Hone Scrub. Well, I'll see what you have for breakfast. Uh, you no good law-breaking coon cat. Thought you'd be on bread and water by now. Uh, don't agree with my digestion. How'd you get out? I jumped bail. You didn't? I sure did. 
They got the biggest reward out for me since Jesse James. <laughs> oh, where are the others? Uh, Sam and C. Barnes went into Georgetown to get some grub. Expect them back any minute now. Yeah. They'll be mighty glad to see you. Yeah. And I sure hope so. So you jumped bail. That's right. Who put up the bail? I... Alice, my wife. What's the matter with you, Seb? It's just like he said. You stay out of it. Where'd she get the money, Jim? Well, I didn't ask her. She paid it, and I got out. Let him be. Well, I'm looking to save my neck, and yours, too. Now, he says he jumped bail. I say he's leading the Rangers right to us. You're wrong, Seb. They aren't tailing me. They don't even know I'm missing yet. Just give me the word, Sam, and I'll fill this Jasper so full of holes he won't be able to hold coarse food. Can't you see he's had a rough time? If the Rangers were following him, they'd have moved in by now. You're going to believe that, liar? Well, he turned in Robert E. Lee for a bottle of Pop Skull whiskey. Let me take him, Sam. Listen, Seb, I've known Jim a sight longer than you. Dad Egan raised both of us. I never knowed him to lie, and I trust him now. Oh, I'd rather trust a skunk. What about it, Sam? You trust Jim, don't you? Uh, well, what's the matter with you two? Can't you let a man rest? But, Sam, the dirty no good, sir. Jim's always been one of us, Seb. Well, you're spooky in the wing-busted bird in cat country. Thanks, Sam. What for? It's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, but it happened just like I said. You've been checking on that bank job for weeks now. And I don't And see it'll how... take four men any way I figure it. Where's it at, Sam? Round Rock. Now, look. Every Saturday morning at exactly 10 o'clock, that mine payroll comes in. Ain't it guarded? <laughs> sure. Till they put it in the safe. <laughs> And then it's between two old men and us. But well, why does it take four of us? I can take care of all that. You and Frank will handle the horses. Jim and I will take the bank. All right. Now, bank's here. Store. Post office. Hotel's right here, right across the street. We set up there like cattlemen. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for a haul like this. Now that Jim's back, we can move out tomorrow. And I'll be watching every move you make. And the first time you blink your eyes the wrong way, it'll be your last time. Nice boys, but here's our ticket to Mexico. I'd feel a lot better if we didn't have to split the loot four ways. Same as we've always done it, Seb. Why don't you let me take this polecat out and shoot him? And I wait while the law's chasing me? You two can clean out the bank, and we'll meet on the Mexican side of the border. If we don't rest these horses, we couldn't even make the border. Now, I'll go in and line up the hotel. Jim, you take the horses to delivery, and you order two quarts of grain a day for each horse. Sure, sir. He doesn't go anywhere without me. And where I go, this undertaker friend goes, and it always shoots where it doesn't show. Well, sir, that little bolt of lightning stampeded the whole stinking herd right up my shirt tail. Spent the whole night trying to bunch him up. Jim, will you light some, please? You make me so nervous, I'm allowed to let a little air into my fruit. Yeah, look here. Tell you what. You go on over to the store, bring back a box of crackers, all right? If he goes, I go. Oh, come on, Steve. Well, Jim's all right. We tap that little bank Saturday, he'll be the first one over the rail to shake hands with a banker. Sam, 
You're crazy to let him out of sight. He'll head for the nearest sheriff, sure as anything. Shut up, Steve. Now, I'm running this outfit, and if I say he goes, he goes. I trust you, Jim. Go ahead. Oh, uh, bring me back some tobacco, too. You got enough money? Sure, I think so. Now, that settles it. You give me that. Is there any reason a man shouldn't carry a picture of his wife? A man so moon-eyed, he carries a picture around with him, can't be trusted. First time you go to see her, they'll grab us. I ain't seen her yet. Give back to him, Steve. Don't worry, Steve. I ain't gonna talk to nobody. If that don't beat all, you let Jim Murphy walk around this town, and we'll all get the rope. See what I mean? Take a look. Why, that dirty. Yeah. What to tell you, Steve? You worry too much. Well, now. Got myself all slicked up so I can visit that nice little bank and look the place over. Anybody ask me? I'm from the Two Dot Outfit in Abilene, here buying cattle. Still say something fishy about the way he looked in that post office. Forget it. Come here, quick. What did I tell you, Sam? I had him figured, didn't I? You stay here. I don't want any action on the street. send this. Going back to the room, Jim. I want to talk to you privately. Well, now, don't get me wrong, Sam. Just start walking. Don't go for your gun. Seed's watching you right from that window. He's itching to shoot you to doll rags. Oh, wait, see, don't hit me. I can explain. You rat livered skunk. I had you pegged from the start. Wait, will you listen to me? All right. What's your story? As I was passing the post office, I saw this on the wall inside. Well, I figured I'd best get it before somebody recognized me and botched our chances for the bank job. Horses are doing fine. nerve. Nice call, Murphy.
Sam, I, I say we ought to move on to Belton. Tap the bank there. Why? Well, I think they're on to us here. Where'd you get that idea? Well, that storekeeper. He kept asking questions. He wouldn't let up. You ever know a storekeeper didn't ask questions, Jim? Now, relax, Jim. Everything's going fine. Payroll come in right on schedule. Just sitting right there waiting to take us to the fiesta. Well, you can call it a hunch or whatever you like. But I say we best be moving out of here. Jim, now that woman of yours is taking more out of you than I thought. You're losing your nerve, Jim. <laughs> I walk the streets of this sleepy little place, and I see that little old bank sitting there saying, here it is, boys. Come on and get it. Makes me want to settle down right here. Sam, maybe this place looks sleepy. Maybe it is. But I've been playing hunches all my life. And I say we better get moving out of here before it's too late. Boys, are moving in position. We better go. You remember that train we took up from the street station? That little Mick conductor shot it out with us and dang near killed pipes. But I had the same hunch then as I have now. Oh, you always get the fritters before a strike. But you're a good man, Jim. We've been through some tight squeaks together, and I've always been able to count on you. Will you listen to me? For once in your life, will you do what I say? Will you clear out of here before something happens? Sure, sure, we'll get out. And then before we close our account at that bank, now, come on, let's move out. Pardon me, gents. I'm Deputy Grimes, and I believe you got a gun on your coat. Sam Bass lived only three days. His epitaph read, a brave man reposes in death here. Why was he not true? The original monument was chipped away by souvenir hunters. This is the headstone that marks his grave in Round Rock, Texas, where every year on Frontier Day, the Sam Bass shootout is reenacted. As for Jim Murphy, who touched his friend with the finger of death, he suffered such remorse that he took poison and ended his own life. Next week, another true story of the Old West. <laughs>